My name is Neil Chuhong. I'm director of something called the Software Sustainability Institute, and I'm based at the University of Edinburgh. Uh, and I'm also involved in a group uh, which is developing fair principles for software. Um, so this is part of the Research Software Alliance, the Research Data Alliance, and the Force 11 groups. Now I'm going to be talking a little bit about what fair means in the uh, context of software and then giving you some possible advice to follow on how you can make your software fair. Uh, one of the things we've noticed in this last year is that lack of access to different things, to data, uh, to people, to resources, makes research more difficult. But this is something that's been going on for a long time. Uh, I often use this quote from the creator of a piece of software called PyMole, because it's way back in the early 2000s, uh, he was talking about the challenges to effective research because of the lack of access to software. Uh, and he was one of the pioneers of, of uh, research software being open and transparent and reusable, all of the things which are uh, the principles of FAIR. And the other thing is that increasingly, the research community relies on software. So we did some work at the Software Sustainability Institute now, um, oh, seven years ago, it's, it's crazy to think it's seven years ago now, where we were polling people to find out how much software affected their work. And I think the key thing that uh, came up for us is that even back then, there was about 70% of researchers who said it wouldn't be practical to conduct their work without using software. So software is everywhere. Um, it's everywhere in each part of the research life cycle, from the software you use to start planning your experiments or your research or to generate ideas for research, collecting and capturing different information from um, data from experiments, but also things like references and other reading material, organizing and storing it, backing it up, interpreting and analyzing it, um, publishing it, and making sure that it is available to, for others to discover and reuse. So software is everywhere, but it's often not treated in the same way as other types of research output. Um, and that's, that's interesting because the FAIR principles are not just for data. In the original FAIR guiding principles paper, uh, there's this line that says all scholarly digital research objects from data and analytic pipelines um, to benefit from the application of the FAIR principles. So what they're saying is that FAIR is, is important because you need to be able to have trust in the research process. You need to be able to ensure that there's transparency, reproducibility, and reusability. So how does software fit into this? The challenge is that software is not just data. Um, so if you look at it from a purely theoretic point of view, software is just a specialist subset of data. But in practice, the way that it's used means it, it needs to be treated differently from data and the FAIR principles applied in a slightly different way. Uh, so there's some things that are similar. Uh, both data and software are not commonly cited. You can Id assign identifiers like DOIs to both of them. Uh, you often have multiple versions that exist that might be incrementally changing or they might be very different. And the reuse of both software and data is typically controlled through licenses. There are some things which are at one level quite similar, uh, but when you look at the details are a bit different. So the way that you build on software and data and link them together, um, obviously we do that with both software and data, but quite often it's different. So software uh, tends to be in the middle of the, of the sort of tree of a research workflow, uh, whereas data tends to be at the edges of it. Um, in both cases, it may depend on hardware and, and software. So um, the data that's generated might be dependent on the sensors, for instance, or the um, experimental machinery. And likewise, the software may depend on the machines that you're working on. And in many cases, it's replaced by newer alternatives. So the evolution of both software and data means that, uh, except in particular fields, you'll always have new things coming along with similar or better functionality that can be swapped into um, the work they do. But there are also 
a number of differences that are important when we consider FAIR for software. And the key ones are that software typically has a larger number and more complex set of dependencies. So the way that it changes over time is more dramatic. You'll find that software uh, is, isn't reusable um, much faster. Uh, and also that the reuse might come in a lot of different flavors. So when we think of reuse of data, we're typically thinking of the same way that uh, another person would have used the data in the past. Um, the only difference might be if it's being used in uh, a different field or for a different problem. It's still being used in the same way generally. Whereas for software, we might be thinking about rerunning or, or executing the software. We might be thinking of reading it to understand um, the decisions and the design decisions in the software. We might be using it to reproduce uh, an experiment, or we might be reusing it through extending or deriving something from it. So reuse for software is a much wider set of options than for data in general. Um, and it can also be connected via workflows. Uh, and there we have challenges for FAIR because um, the FAIR data principles, although they talk about interoperability, um, they talk mostly around interoperability of formats, whereas for software we're also talking about interoperability of APIs and interoperability of semantic understanding as well. So, how has this evolved? Um, the FAIR Guiding Principles were developed and finally published in 2016, and over the last few years, the community has been exploring what it means to make software FAIR. So we've had a number of different workshops run by different groups, including some of the people um, who are attending this call, looking at how FAIR might be applied to software. And this has resulted in, in a number of different things. Um, in 2020, there were a large number of different resources published where the community was putting down its thoughts about how uh, FAIR should be applied to software, including um, a paper called Towards FAIR Principles for Research Software, uh, but also um, tools uh, that some of which I'll reference later on about how you might see how FAIR your software is um, and understanding this, uh, the way that FAIR is used in practice for software. And so this has led to the establishment of the FAIR for Research Software Working Group, which I'm a co-chair of. Uh, and at this moment, in fact, we have the second last of our drafting meetings tonight. Um, we are looking at drafting a new set of FAIR principles for research software, which will be going into community consultation. So the way forward after this is the publishing of these principles and getting community feedback and, and approval on them. But then it's going onwards to understanding all the other things that happen once you have uh, the FAIR principles. So how does that feed into things like indicators and metrics, into career profiles and reward structures, um, making it machine readable in output management plans, and ultimately changing policy to ensure that research is more transparent, reproducible, and reusable. Um, so uh, this is this is kind of like all background information, but you're probably interested in knowing what you can actually do right now. Uh, so I'm just going to finish off with um, one slide on what I think is good enough practices for FAIR software whilst you're waiting on us to finish off the principles. Uh, so to make your software findable, make sure it's uh, easy to discover by using descriptive metadata. So things like uh, making sure that it's got a descriptive title, uh, making sure that people can understand who the authors are, uh, providing keywords. Publish a citation for your software so people know how they should credit you and add it to a community registry if one exists. Uh, and I'll admit that that's one area that uh, a lot of communities don't have a community registry yet. To make it accessible, Put your source code in a code repository. Um, so something like GitHub is a good choice there. And then deposit major versions in a preservation repository. So if you're publishing something that you expect to be shared with someone else, or it's in relation to a paper, make sure it's going into your institution's digital repository or into something like Zenodo or Figshare to get a DOI. Make it interoperable by making sure you describe the functionality of your software. 
use open data formats that meet domain relevant community standards, provide references to other um, research objects like papers and the data sets that you're using, and modularize your code and document design so people understand how they uh, can connect it to other things. And finally, to make your software reusable, choose a license and apply it to your software. There's nothing worse than a piece of software where people can't understand how to reuse it. Document the dependencies that's required and ensure that others can understand and execute your code. And I often think the best way of doing that last thing is just give it to one of your colleagues or friends to try and rerun. If they can't rerun it, and that might be either by building the source code or by running um, the executable or by using the binder or Docker container, then go back and have a look at it because it probably means that you won't remember how to reuse it in six months time either. So these are all what I would consider good enough practices for research software. And I think the key thing here is I've, I'm a pragmatic implementer of FAIR principles. I think it's all about making sure that you're doing things better and incrementally getting better. So I would say if you can do any of these things, uh, then you're on the road towards FAIR software. Um, if you're interested in getting involved in FAIR for research software, I put some information in the slides and you can find out more.